Good morning, church. Thank you so much for joining us so early this morning. And if you are tuning in online, um, it is so good to see you in the house of God today. You know, before we even start our service today, why not we spend some time to quieten our hearts and prepare our hearts to worship God today and to receive all that He has in store for us today. Can we do that, church? Let's just spend some time to pray. Let's uh, let's um Allow God to, to take away different thoughts in our hearts and our minds today and, and let us focus on Him. Let's pray for everyone that's tuning in today or coming to church uh, today to have a fresh encounter with God um, in such a powerful way. Let's do that, church. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that we have the opportunity to, to continue together as a church, Lord, to come together to worship you as a church. We thank you for technology that we can tune in online as well and, and be together uh, to worship you, God. And Lord, just pray even right now that we just want to lay aside all these um, thoughts, um, these different things that um, has brought with uh, that we have brought with us throughout the week, Lord. We just want to lay them at your feet and say, Lord, today we just want to come to you and sit at your feet and 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 meet with you today and spend time with you today, oh Lord God, and 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 worship you, Lord. And um, Lord, just pray that you continue to prepare our hearts even for for um, different things that you want to speak into our hearts today, Lord. Would you fill us again with your Holy Spirit, Lord? Um, just pray that today we can fix our eyes on you. And, and Lord, we just want to continue to bless as well the different ones who have been serving so faithfully uh, week after week, um, be it... Um, recording uh, for service or even serving today, Lord. We just pray for your double portion of anointing and your blessings, O oh Lord God. And um, Lord, we just pray that your presence will be so strong today in our houses, wherever we're worshiping you from, Lord. And even in this room, Lord, would you saturate this place? And Holy Spirit, would you take over today? We say we, we love you, Lord. We want to meet with you today. And would you just fill us with more of you um, and empty us? Uh, we say less of us and more of you today, oh Lord God. Just commit this time into your hands. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen. Um, right now, we also want to spend some time to pray for our international church funds. You know, flash up on your screens or on the screen behind me. You can see that we are... Um, part of a larger church family, you know, uh, from the east to the west, uh, from the rising of the sun to the, so it's going down the name of the Lord is being praised within the ex-church family. So let's now, why don't you choose a church plant um, to specifically pray for, for the next 30 seconds, you know, bless the church, uh, bless the leaders, you know, declare growth, unity, 
and multiplication. And even this time, pray for God's provision as different churches are going to, uh, through different restrictions. Uh, let's pray for God's um, creativity and wisdom to, to lead the church and to navigate throughout this time, right? Let's do that. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you um, that we can have the witnesses to be bold, to be courageous, oh Lord God, to, to live by faith, oh Lord God, yeah. in you. And Lord, just pray, Lord, uh, even during this time that you continue to provide for every church plant, Lord, we pray that um, even... Um, in different countries, as restrictions are, are being, there are more and more restrictions, Lord, we pray for your creativity, O oh Lord God, to be able to connect uh, with new people, to be able to connect with the communities that you've placed us in. And Lord, we just pray that truly your, your kingdom come and your will be done, even um, in X Church, in every church plant, and we pray, O oh Lord God, may your name be blessed and glorified throughout the ends on the uh, throughout the ends of the earth, um, even today, O oh Lord God. And we thank you. Uh, we continue to bless your name. We we thank you for all that you're going to do. And in Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen. Church, I hope your hearts are ready. Uh, as we move on to a time of worship, you know, for us who are worshiping together physically, um, even though we cannot sing loudly, as loudly as we want, but let's, let's give God our best, yeah. right? Let's give, let's um, sing in our hearts, hum, if you can, you know, let's give God the honor and the praise and the worship that he deserves. And if you're tuning in from home, you know, feel free to sing a loud dance in your rooms. And even here you can dance and, and jump and, you know, let's, um, uh, let's, let's worship. Let's, <laughs> let's do it, church. Morning, church. You know, it's so good to see all of you here this morning. And you know, we're going to enter this time of praise and worship and the word of God says to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his cause with praise. We want to start this morning by, you know, just lifting the name of Jesus high, worshiping the name of Jesus and just giving him all the praise because he deserves it all. Amen. So church, wherever you are, whether you're here in friend's house or, you know, you're watching this from home, I want to invite all of you to just stand. And even as we enter into our first song, we want to just give God our loudest shout of praise and a clap Offering, amen. Ready, church? One, two, three. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Lord. I was buried beneath my shame. Who carry that kind of way? It was my turn till I met you. I was breathing, but not alive. All my feelings I tried to hide. It was my soul Till I met you oh. You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glory I stay You called my name Yes. 
Namaste. Woo! Now your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. The only through Jesus when I met you oh, You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness You took your glorious day You called my name
Father, we're crying out. Spirit, we need you now. Glorious the surround says, Lord, come and fill this place. Father, we're on our knees. With every heart beat, we bring you this offering. Lord, come and fill this
Jesus Caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment And I never want to leave I'm not you for blessings Jesus, you don't owe me anything More than any Nothing else will do 
your sister glory, your sister name above all names. What a powerful name it is! What a powerful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is! Nothing can stand again. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful, what a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against, what a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus, declare it. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Even as uh, we are in this attitude of uh, worship and, and praise, um, attitude of worship, let's spend some time to pray, amen? Um, I just felt that uh, maybe um, some of you here are, or even tuning in online, you're just going through such a tough week or ones are going through, but Lord, you are there and you are with them and just Pray, O oh Lord God, that even right now you'll fill each and every one um, who are um, seeking, O oh Lord God. Would you fill them with your peace and your comfort, O oh Lord God? Different ones who um, feel like um, they cannot have, um, they are, if, different ones who are in such a hopeless situation, Lord, would you fill them with your hope? Would you fill them with your joy? And Lord, even during this time, would, would, uh, would uh, you just help them find rest in you, O Lord yeah. God? I pray, O Lord God, that you'll teach um, each and, oh, and every one of us to, to come to you and, and, and hide, un, uh, hide at your feet, O Lord God, and, and rest in your presence. And Lord, I know that you are in control. We declare, O Lord God, your 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 peace, we declare your power over every situation. We declare breakthrough over every situation. We just pray, oh Lord God, that we know, oh Lord God, even as we sang just now, oh Lord God, your name is powerful. Your name is above every other name. It is above every, every other name, oh Lord God. You are our mighty provider. You are with us, and we just declare breakthrough. Even during this time, we declare chains be broken, O Lord God. Whatever fear, whatever anxiety or worries, O Lord God, we want to lay them at your feet and say, O Lord God, you take the wheel, you take control. Lord, we, we thank you for all that you're going to do, and we believe it. And Lord, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we declare it, um, receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Well, welcome, church. Uh, welcome to our, sorry. <laughs> welcome to our Sunday service. And uh, you know, every week we love to do this. Um, uh, we spend some time to welcome, you know, just, oh, sorry. Please be seated. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so every week we, we love to welcome a very special group of people. And if you are visiting us for the first or second time, you know, we, we love to give you a warm welcome. Usually we'll come over and, you know, give you a high five, give you a hug or a handshake. But because of this uh, situation and to respect social distancing, you know, why don't we do this? Turn to your neighbor um, and say, it's so good to see you today. 
Ooh. And those that are tuning in online, if it, if it is your first time tuning in online, would you just drop us a comment in the chat, introduce yourself, and those who call X Church your home, would you just, you know, say hi in the chat and, and welcome them. All right, and if you are based in London, do feel free to let us know if you are interested to join us physically at church next week as well. Cool. Um, yes, okay. So now uh, it's now time uh, for a tithe and offering. So in Acts, we look forward to tithe and offering because we believe. Lord, we thank you that you are our mighty provider. We thank you that all that we have is from you. And Lord, truly, we lack nothing, Lord. And uh, we pray, Lord God, even as we prepare our hearts to give to you today, oh Lord God, help us give back what is rightfully yours and help us give with a cheerful heart. And even uh, as we give, Lord, would you continue to bless um, and use this giving, oh Lord God, for the furtherance of your kingdom, for to us to bless the communities around us, for more people to come to know who you are, uh, to, to know of your goodness, and to know that you love them. Um, Lord, we just thank you, and, uh, we, and let's give in Jesus' name, we ask and pray, amen. And let's prepare to give, and let's give with a cheerful heart. Um, now we're moving on to announcements, and today I have two announcements for you. Um, the first announcement, flash up on the screen, is we have prayer meeting this Tuesday at 7 p.m. For some homes, uh, it's 7.30, but uh, we are meeting online in various homes, so if you are interested uh, and if you're not with your homes, do let us know and we will give you the details. So. Um, usually we come together to just pray for each other and pray for the church um, and also pray for this uh, situation, current situation right now. And let's, um, you know, it's such a powerful time and let's come together and uh, declare breakthroughs together in our different situations. And, you know, let's see more and more of God's um, move and testimonies in our life of God's goodness. Amen. Cool. And the second announcement we have today is Alpha Online is happening um, every Tuesday, uh, every Thursday at 8 p.m. Um, so if you don't know what Alpha is, it is uh, basically a safe space for us to to for you to come and ask questions, to explore about Christianity, to explore about. Uh, God and, and faith in such a non pressurized and uh, non-formal um, environment. Yeah. And yeah, if you have questions about God, if you're searching, and even if you have been a Christian for a while, or even if you are a new Christian, you know, this is the place for you to ask any questions without feeling uh, pressured. Um, and even if you have as well a friend that you, you think would love to to come and, and ask these questions, feel free to invite them. And you can sign up through the registration link um, here or flash up on your screens. You can see uh, the registration link uh, to sign up for Alpha. All right. Oh, um, so now we are moving on to birthdays. Is there anyone celebrating their birthdays this week from, sun, from today till next Saturday? Anyone? Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> or if anyone online, tuning in online, if it's your birthday, you know, shout out in the chat. Uh, say that it's your birthday, and I'm sure uh, everyone who is tuning in, you know, do a little mini celebration there. <laughs> and let's um, 
yeah, celebrate and wish them happy birthday. And if it is your birthday, happy birthday. And may this year, yeah, Noel. Oh, happy birthday, Annabelle. Happy, happy birthday. You know, may this year be your best year yet in God. And uh, yeah, happy birthday. So, <clears throat> cool. so uh, next we are going to spend some time to pray for the salvations of our friends and family. And usually every week we, we want to take some time to do this. And as you know, most of us, if not all of us here, uh, have had the opportunity to, to know of God and, and, and experience God's goodness in our lives. And we also want our friends and families um, and even your colleagues or different ones or, um, in your lives to be able to experience God's goodness and come to know him. So even with this current situation, and we cannot continue to meet um, to connect, but we can pray, right? Let's pray. And... Yeah, let's continue to pray for different people God has placed in your heart to pray for. And let's pray for an opportunity for them to come to know Jesus. Right. Lord, we just want to Thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord God. We thank you that we can have a relationship with you. We thank you, Lord, that you love us so much that you sent your only son, Jesus, to, uh, to, to die for, for our sins, Lord. And truly, we, we do nothing to deserve that. And and you say we are worth it. And Lord, we just, right now we want to pray and commit every name that you've placed in each and every one of our hearts unto you, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that you will create opportunities, divine opportunities for us to, to share, to speak into their lives, Lord God, to, to um, share about your goodness, Lord God, that they may come to know who you are. And Lord, just pray that even for different ones whose family or friends are not um, with us right now, um, Lord, we pray that you place uh, different ones around them to to sow into their lives, to to come to know you, Lord. And we continue to declare for their salvation, Lord. We we trust in your perfect timing, Lord, and and we thank you. Would you continue to to give us the faith, the courage to be able to speak, uh, to be able to share, and and just um, give us the heart. Uh, to to have compassion and and to love the people around us like how you would love them, Lord. We just thank you. We we continue to commit these names into your hands, and uh, we believe for their salvation, Lord. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen. Cool. Hey guys, are you ready for the most exciting time of service today? which is to hear the word of God. So would you all stand and give a warm welcome to our speaker today, Pastor Dave. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, church. Please be seated. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. Let's give Bess a big hand as well. It's our first time sharing today. And uh, we always celebrate people when they step up. And, uh, you know, it's not easy. Uh, to chat uh, for the first time and stare at the camera and all that. But Bessie, you know, thank you so much for, for serving. And uh, let's also give a hand for everyone who helped serve today. You know, our brilliant streaming team. Uh, and, uh, you know, all the ushers and everyone who helped make today possible. Amen. Welcome to church. So good to see all of you guys here. Uh, and uh, before I go into today's message, uh, today I, I just want to, you know, honor uh, just at least two people. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the beautiful thing about, you know, doing life together here in the UK, in London, uh, or in Bristol, or Edinburgh, because we've got family tuning in online from there, uh, is that, you know, people join our church family, and, and it, what a blessing it is, you know, to meet new people, to help people discover God and faith, uh, and to see that faith come alive. Uh, and, of course, the sad thing is that sometimes in doing life together, uh, uh, London and the UK uh, being such a transient city, sometimes people come and they come as students and eventually they graduate and they have to go home, you know, or sometimes it's a work transfer kind of situation. Uh, and today, sadly, will be the last Sunday service uh, for, you know, at least two people, uh, uh, one person here, uh, in London, another person in Bristol, uh, but uh, you know, uh, it is the last Sunday for Wing Man. Wing Man, you know, uh, our, you know, the camera might not be able to see her, so so I'll keep it brief. But you know, Wing Man, uh, Wing Man, what do you stand here? You can stand and just everybody, just let's just give Wing Man a big clap. Um, Wing Man, just in case some of you don't know, uh, you know, she's uh, joined us when she was a student and she serves with us, and it's just been so amazing to see her grow. Uh, and, uh, you know, not just grow as, you know, a student, but grow in her faith, you know, and grow in serving God. Uh, and uh, today, even her last Sunday, she's still serving there on XTV. Uh, and uh, she also serves on the core team. She also serves as, as you know, assistant home leader uh, for Kensington Homes. So I know Kensington Homes, uh, you're going to miss her very much, I'm sure. Uh, but, you know, Wingman, we just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for all that you do. Uh, and, you know, we, we had a chance to catch up uh, before you. Well, you, she's flying off tomorrow, just in case you, you, you're wondering. Uh, so, you know, uh, 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 pray for her. Uh, and uh, it's going to be good. But the Wingman graduated. She studied in Imperial College, civil engineering degree plus master's. And uh, she's a bright and brilliant student. And she's having to go home because, you know, I mean, uh, for various factors. And, and I know she tried applying for jobs in the UK, but, you know, the job market is tough right now. But we believe that, hey, whenever God closes one door, He opens a better, more effective door. And so we believe that there's a better, more effective door or doors for you uh, in the future. But if I can say one thing about Wing Man, uh, and, and it dawned upon us when we were spending time with her, is that Wing Man, you are someone that shows that it can be done. You know, you're, you're someone that, you know, you're, you, you role model. And, and it is all the way back from, you know, uh, back from the days when, you know, they would study in Kensington and, and the other side of London, West London. Uh, yet we didn't have a homes there yet. Uh, and so a bunch of them, you know, had to travel from Imperial College all the way to Camden for homes. You know, how many of you would do that? Exactly, not a lot of you, but, but, but a bunch of them did. Uh, and they showed that it can be done, that, that the things of God are worth traveling for. You know, even coming, you know, worshipping here in the church in Houston, you know, some, some of her friends would be like, oh, you go to church so far away, and yet she shows that it can be done. You know, we, we go to the ends of the earth for food, and yet we never complain. And why, why, why is it that, you know, we can't take, you know, just a, a, a train ride for church, and, and Wingman, you show that it can be done. You know, another thing that we know about Wingman, some of you might or might not know this, is that the, the, the inside joke is that she never studies. You know, and she's, she can have exam on a Monday, but on, on Sunday, she's game for everything. She's like, yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go get some bubble milk tea. Yeah, let's go for dim sum. Yeah, yeah, let's go hang out. Let's go for a movie. Uh, and of course, people are saying that, you know, Wingman, go home, go home. Uh, and, and yet, we know that actually uh, she does very well in the studies because she takes time. She, 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 she puts in the hours, puts in the effort in all the other days so that on Sunday, you know, she's able to rest and, and, and relax. And, and again, you show that it can be done, Wingman, that you can be a student and still enjoy life, fun, but also honor God with your faith. You know, it can be done that you can do well in school and also excel in your faith. You know, it can be done. And, and, and you know, we just want to say thank you, Wingman. You know, your life is a huge message that's being preached that it can be done. Uh, and we pray that many people will be inspired and we believe that many more will be inspired uh, in Malaysia as well. Amen. You know, why don't we stretch forth our hands? Let's just bless Wingman. Amen. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for her life. God, we bless her. 
God, we thank you, Lord, for Wing Man. We thank you, Lord, for her life that has been used by you to role model out, Lord, um, what prioritizing God looks like. And how when we prioritize God, we do not miss out on life and fun. And also, we continue to grow in faith. And so, God, we bless her. We bless her, her, her going back home as well. We believe that, God, you are guiding her decisions to head back home. We believe that that will lead to a, a better door to be open for her life in terms of her career and family life and everything. We believe that you're going to grow her to the next level in her faith and in her character. And so, God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for Wingman. God, we bless her. And, Lord, we declare, Lord, the greater days and greater years ahead. Lord, we pray that she will also reap all that she has sown in the UK for the last four years. She will reap it for the next 40 years. Uh, you know, for all that she's done building your church, she will reap it for her entire life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, another person that uh, is also having their last Sunday is not here, but is, uh, her name is Yeni. Some of you know her. Uh, she's part of our core team in X Church Bristol. That's right, X Bristol. Hello, represent. Uh, I hope the, the internet connection is better now. Uh, just now, they were having a lot of text messages to me saying that, oh, there's something with the stream. And I was like, okay, okay, guys. We pray, okay? Peace be still. Uh, and uh, Yeni, but Yeni, thank you so much. Uh, Yeni uh, is someone that joined our church, you know, seeking. She wasn't a believer when she found Jesus. And so, you know, when we first met her, she was this shy little girl who walked into church and then just sat at the back and refused to talk to anyone. You know, I, I pride myself for being able to talk to people, strike a conversation, uh, but it, it was hard. It was hard to, to get her to open up. But I'm so thankful that she opened up to Jesus. And she kept coming, even though she's quiet. And maybe some of you here, you're seeking. Maybe you're tuning in, you're seeking. Keep coming. Church is a safe space for you to keep coming. Keep experiencing for yourself. We're not here to pressure you, but keep coming. And she kept coming and coming. And then one day, she just opened up to God. And, and, and when I saw God come into her life, her life started to change. There was a joy that came out. There was confidence that came out. You know, there was great baking that came out as well because, you know, Yeni serves in our hospitality team. Basically, she is uh, ex Bristol's version of Bess. You know, uh, they, are, they are copycat version of Bess, you know. So, so if, you, if you're wondering, if you're wondering how ex Bristol must feel right now, can you imagine if Bess leaves suddenly? You know, and, and Bess, you're, uh, not Bess, uh, uh, Yeni. Yeni, you're flying back on Thursday and uh, we just want to say thank you for just, you know, um, just, just thank you for, for joining church. Thank you for serving. Thank you for being part of the core team in Bristol. It was our privilege to baptize you. And uh, we can only believe that there will be a bigger, more effective door for you, Yeni. Uh, and the best is yet to come. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Sorry about that, but you know what? This is church. You know, we're family. Amen. We're not just here for transactional. Like, you know, why does this person the launch? You know that he's got the next 30 minutes to preach the word. You know, why is he using the good 10 minutes to say goodbye? You know, because this is church. This is what church should be. This is a family. Amen. And so I encourage everyone to unpack. You know, the reason why we are able to celebrate these people because they chose to unpack. They didn't just come and, 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 and treat church as a drive through but they unpack and they serve and so much fruit and life was birthed out of them. So Wing Man Yeni, we're going to miss you so much. Amen. Right now, we are in the middle of a series uh, studying the Ten Commandments called 4 plus 6. And we are right now in part 4. And uh, it is my blessing. Uh, I was so blessed to uh, be preparing this uh, uh, week's message, but also so challenged. Uh, I, I never thought I would be challenged so much. And, uh, and I pray that you too will be blessed and challenged by the Word of God. Amen? You know, uh, you know why don't you turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 5, and we're going to start reading from verse 1 to 15. But today our focus will be from 12 to 15, but we're going to read from verse 1 just to get the full context. Amen? If you're there, can I hear a good amen? Amen? I know, that, I know you're wearing face masks, but we can still make noise. Amen? Are you there? Can I hear a good amen? Amen? That's more like it. Amen? Jesus is alive, so the church is alive. Amen? All right, okay, let's do this together. Let's lift up our hands. Let's do some interaction. Everything is not so socially distanced now. So live and says, God, we surrender the preaching to your hands. I'll stretch out your hand to receive something. You say, Lord, we receive 
your instruction and correction for us today. Now clench your fists. God, give us the strength to obey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 1 says this, And Moses called out Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and the judgments which I speak in your hearing today, that you may learn them and be careful to observe them. That's what we want to do. We want to learn and observe. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb, and the Lord did not make this covenant with our fathers, but with us, those who are here today. All of us who are alive. That's right. The Word of God is for those of us who are alive today. The Lord talked with you face to face on the mountain from the midst of the fire. I stood between the Lord and you at that time to declare to you the Word of the Lord. For you were afraid because of the fire and you did not go up the mountain. He said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. When we first started off, we, we, we learned that, hey, you know, God's first command is for us to know God and for us to acknowledge our need for Him and to serve Him. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. And the second commandment teaches us that we not only should acknowledge God, but we need to worship Him. You know, in a continuous manner. Not build an image and then leave Him in a corner so that we can get on with our lives. No, God is saying that you, you can't have that, I want a relationship with you. Do not objectify me, you know, but, but come on a journey with me. And God said, no, he, and the reason why He said, I will bless those and I will curse those is so that he, He's trying to tell us that, and I mean business. You know, I'm God and I want you to worship me in the way that I want to be worshipped. And I mean business. And you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. And so last week we learned about representing God. That's what taking God's name is. We represent God. And so God is saying that, acknowledge me. I'm, I'm the God that you need. I'm the only one you need. And worship me, not in a transactional, not in a once a year, not in a religious matter, but in a relational way. And not just that, you know, worship me by representing me. And so God is saying that don't just, you know, uh, put God in a box. And, oh, okay, once a week I will worship God. And then all the other days, no, God is saying represent me all the days of your life. Do not take my name in vain. Which brings us to part four today, verse 12. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of, your, of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your ox, nor your donkey, nor any of your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates, and that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. And remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. Amen. Praise God. Today's title, if you're taking down notes, you can put four plus six, part four. Four commandments for our relationship with God. Six commandments for our relationship with men. And part four today, the title is, You Shall Keep the Sabbath Holy. You shall keep the Sabbath holy. In short, there's so much to unpack. Many times when we look at the Word of God and our friends who don't have faith or are seeking, you can have the bad stereotype that Christianity is old-fashioned, archaic, you know, it's burdensome. But when I read this, I was like, wow, God, you are not burdensome. In fact, you are so ahead of your time. In fact, you are so civilized. In fact, you are so loving. Because the context of this is, when God gave this command, this was in ancient times. There was no such thing as democracy. There was no such thing as human rights. There was no such thing as the constitution. 
And yet God gave his people this law so that all of them can be equal under him. So that no king can, can corrupt his people or manipulate his people. And in this scripture, just like over there, commandment four is so powerful because it is the earliest form of labor law. Labor law. Like today, we have, you know, a minimum wage. That's a form of labor law, right? Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, holidays that uh, your employers must honor. You know, there are bank holidays that they must let you go and do your thing. That's labor law. They must pay you every month on the same day. That's labor law. For students who work part-time jobs, you know, you cannot be exploited. You can only work, what was it, 10 hours a week? 20? Oh, wow, that's, that sounds exploitive. But anyway, 20 hours a week, not more. Because that's labor law to protect you so that people don't take advantage of you. And here you have, you know, not just a law about rest, which we'll go into, but let's, 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 let's unpack it a little bit. It is the earliest form of labor law and also employees' rights. So when you think about it, can you imagine God is saying, that, wow, I'm a God, I, I honor me, worship me, but it is also my role to take care of you. And, and part of our worship towards God is the, is the good treatment of our fellow men. Because that's why you say, you know, honor me, Sabbath. And this is how you celebrate that Sabbath. Let your servants off. And, and this was powerful because, you know, it was also the, the earliest, not only labor law, because it didn't say, okay, you take a break, but make your servants work for you. No, no you take a break and your servants take a break and your animals take a break. And, and just when you thought, wow, that was, that was really ahead of its time, you know, back then, again, like I said, this was like ancient times. So, so, so men and women didn't have equal rights. But then God put them on equal footing and says, you are deserving of equal rest. And that's why it, it was so precise to name that not just your male servants, but even your female servants. Why did God go specific to, to tell us very clearly that, hey, I, I love both genders and I'm for equal treatment of genders. And, and again, you know, it starts with like, you shall take a break. You know, this is like, you know, you no know, God's Oprah Winfrey moment. You no, know, you shall rest. You shall rest. Everybody take a rest. So say, you don't work. No, your son. And then people go like, yeah, that's right. Because sons are, you know, in an in a Eastern context, sons. Ooh, sons, special, right? No, your daughters. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Fine, fine. Okay. No, your male servants. And then male servants will go, oh, oh, so the female servants will work. <laughs> no. And the female servants get off as well. And, and this was unheard of. This was liberating. Today, you look at this and go, like, yeah, it sounds about right. But that's only because of this command. Western civilization and the labor laws that we enjoy today didn't come from some politician. It came from the Word of God. That's how powerful this is. And not just that, it's also a command for animal rights. How many of you love animals? You know, how many of you love to eat them? Okay, and how many vegans? You know, anyway, you know, it says here, okay, so you rest, your sons rest, your daughters rest. And I know some of you are saying that, uh, does it mean that the housewife does everything? No, okay, it's implied that when the man rests, the woman rests as well, okay? The sons rest, the daughters rest, male servants rest, female servants rest, and then goes on, right? Your ox, your donkey, your cattle, Oh, now, don't, don't try to be funny and go like, what about the chickens and the ducks and, you know? No, no, no. It means all animals. Just rest. Especially the animals that work for you. The horses that carry you. The donkeys that serve you. You know, donkeys as actual people. Oh, no, so sorry. I mean, animal, not people. Uh, it, it was a joke that came out wrong. Don't, don't, don't call people donkey, okay, chat? All right? Yeah, and, and it was like, wow. Animal. So when you think about it, everything that we're fighting, I mean, people are, are, are protesting today. Oh, you know, uh, equal treatments of people. God was, was, was the first. You know, oh, love, you know, uh, uh, love the whales. God was first. In fact, you know, the, the, you know, he was there. And not just that, the equal treatment regardless of race or background. Because it says that even the stranger who is within your gates, because, you know, if you're not careful, can be, okay, so the Israelites rest, right? So the foreigners work. No, no, no. God loves people regardless of their culture and their background and their nationality. God's not xenophobic. 
God's not exploitive. And God is saying that, and, and I want my people to show this is how you worship me, by treating people well. By, 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 by resting. And, you know, by, by, by not exploiting the stranger. And this is so powerful. You know, I hope that one day some of you will be rich and, you know, and you have your own businesses and I pray that we will live by this command and go like, wow, I'm not going to mistreat other people because that's not worship to God. That doesn't honour God. You know, so, you know, and it's so powerful, isn't it? When you, when you unpack it, it's like, oh, wow, wait a second, Pastor. I thought it was just about keeping the Sabbath holy, take an off day. No, it's not just about take an off day. It's about taking care of people. And God is saying that, hey, I'm the God who takes care of you. Trust me, I'm the God who takes care of you, regardless of your status. Boss or servant doesn't matter. And it goes on, right? It says, says you know, not even the stranger. And then it goes on and, 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 and who is within your gates, that your male and female servant may rest as well as you. And as I was reading this, I was like, you know, I, I had a moment. You know, I had a very Asian moment as I was reading it. I don't know why, you know, but the, you know, the very Asian way of pronunciation came up and I go like, and your male and female servant may rest as well as you. I read it like, as well, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the me, the, you know, the, the attempting to be stiff upper lip English me is going like, may, may they rest as well as you. But then suddenly the Asian side of me came, may they rest as well as you. And, and in Asia, when they rest as well as you, means that if you have, you know, if you're going to eat, they must eat. If you're going to sleep, they must sleep. And I started digging into like the Hebrew and go like, God, which one is it? May they rest as well as you. That means that as you rest, may they rest or may they rest as well as you. Am, am I losing you? Am I, am, am, is, is my foreigners losing? I hope not, right? And I find out that God is Asian because... <laughs> And, and, and friends, all that, that's just surface level. We're going to go in deeper. Is that okay? I got so much. I'm so excited to share with you. I hope you're excited to hear this too. We ask ourselves three questions every week. Three questions when I'm packing the commandments, right? So we, we, we look at all that historical context and, and how amazing it is. And hopefully this informs our modern day living. But the three questions, question number one, we ask ourselves, what does this command tell us about who we are? Are you ready for point number one? Point number one is this, we are only human. And this is amazing because we, in other words, God is saying that I, I know your limitations and I know your need for rest. And I'm giving you this command because I know you are only human and you need to rest. So God is again showing us His character. He's not a demanding God. And sometimes the devil wants us to think that, that, that God is so demanding. Don't trust him. He's the demanding God. Give him your tithe and you ask for 30% more. No, he, he's the God that wants you to rest because he knows that you're only human. He's the God that wants you to eat because he knows that you're only human. God, God, God is, the, is the God that, that wants your boss to treat you fairly because he knows that you are only human. And that's amazing. And this reminds us that, wow, not only are we only human, but a, a part of our worship to God is to rest. You know, the word you know, uh, Sabbath it comes from the Hebrew word Shabbat, which means to stop and rest. To stop doing the, other, the things you do on the other days. Separate that one day apart from me, says God. In that day, stop. You know, if you are a farmer, stop being a farmer that day. And maybe some of us, you know, you'll be happy to hear this. If you're a student, stop being a student that day. Ooh, Controversial. You know, if you are a workaholic, stop being a workaholic that day. If you're a pharmacist, stop being a pharmacist that day. If you're a doctor, stop being a doctor that day. So church members, don't go up to the pharmacists and doctors and go like, you know, uh, uh, brother, I got this itch. Uh, I got this itch. You know, stop it. Stop getting free medical advice and prescriptions. And God is saying that Shabbat, stop and rest. The word rest is, is you know, is nuach, which means to abide, to chill. So, so God was the first one to invent Netflix and chill, except he says, stop and chill. Stop and chill. Isn't it amazing? God is saying, in a world where we are going on and on about uh, work-life balance, mental health, stress, God was there before all that hashtags. 
And God is saying that, live, work, worship, but one day, stop, rest. Because you need it. And that's the thing. We sometimes think, no, I can keep going. How many of you are like that? How many of you hate holidays? You know, no? Okay. How many are workaholics? How many of you love checking your emails? How many are addicted to your emails? You know? And God is saying, stop, rest. Don't, don't point fingers. Don't point fingers. Okay? Stop, rest. Surprisingly, all, it's all females that are pointing fingers. Oh, okay, wow. We got, we, got, we got strong women in church. Praise God. Stop, rest. But, 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 but God, you don't understand. Stop, Rest. Just one email. Stop. Rest. Spend time with me. Rest. Abide with your family. You know, because it wasn't, you no, know, everybody stopped working and then everybody's like, you know, social distance. No, no, no. This was like pre-COVID times. And people were allowed to gather and have meals. And we pray that one day we shall have you no know, proper Sabbath again you know, where we can enjoy a meal. And of course, no many times we go into the, the whole realm of like, oh, is it Saturday? Is it Sunday? And let, me, let me just clarify, okay? It doesn't matter. Because, and it's not just me saying it, let's go to Mark chapter 2, verse 27 to 28. Okay, before you, you start stoning me. Mark 2, 27, 28, Jesus, Jesus said, He said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also the Lord of the Sabbath. So let's focus on the Sabbath was made for man. Uh, Pastor, do I do it like the Old Testament way, which is sundown on Friday until, you know, nightfall on Saturday? Well, if you want to, sure. Uh, uh, but God, no, uh, but, but Pastor, you know, uh, the, the scripture says, you know, work six days and then take, but night now I need work five days. So which day should be my Sabbath? Doesn't matter because the Sabbath was for you. So technically, my Sabbath is Monday because right now, in a way, I'm working. But I enjoy what I work, so I hardly work. You know? Anyway, so... And, and, and so, th- does it mean that, oh, if I don't take Sundays? No, no. You, right now, you're, you're enjoying your Sabbath. You're stopping your work. You're coming to church. You're chilling in God's presence, receiving His Word. You're doing your Sabbath. But yet, you know, some people could be serving and God is just saying that, just set one day apart. Oh, well, why not? You know, five day working week, just set one day apart. So, does it mean I get to have two Sabbaths? Just whatever, but just set one day apart. <laughs> you can enjoy the benefits of a prolonged Sabbath, but just set one day apart because the Sabbath is meant for you. Isn't it beautiful that God is saying that I have a gift for you called rest? And, 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 and you know, it's so powerful and, and it's such a powerful showcase of God's nature. But let me go in a little bit of like, you know, is it Saturday or Sunday? Traditionally, like I said, it's sundown from Friday until nightfall on Saturday. Uh, but the early church started, uh, you know, remembering Sunday because it's the day that the Lord rose again. And, and of course, now today we're modern. We have like five days working week, two days. So regardless of Saturday or Sunday, God is saying that you're only human and you need to rest. Set aside a day to rest, to stop your emails, to stop your work, and this applies to work only. I don't want you one day to become a parent and go like, oh, it's time to Sabbath, baby. So parent, no, so, so kids, feed yourself. Mommy ain't going to change your diaper today. Mommy's taking a Sabbath from being a mom. No, no, no. Being a mom is not a job. Being a dad is not a job. So that doesn't change, but our jobs change. Amen? We are only human. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are only human. Amen? And then, oh, oh. We, we serve a God who knows us, who knows our limitations and wants to see us rested so that we can go far. Amen? So the second question, the second point is this. So why was this command given? If rest is so good, why do people need to be reminded to rest? Because the truth is this, point number two, we need to remember where our rest comes from. It's not just a command to rest, but it's also a reminder where is this rest rooted? Because the number one reason people can't rest is this. Let me just use a very simple example that a lot of people here can understand. You're a student, you got an exam on Monday, right? And then you go like, oh, Pastor, you don't understand. I got a very tough people on Monday. If I don't study today, but the Word of God says this, how we struggle to rest, whether it's studies or even working, 
Some of us who own our own businesses, sometimes we find it very hard to clock out. For us who lead teams, it feels very hard. You know, we work for multinational companies are, are, are worse. Because, you know, you do trading and then suddenly America's stock market opens up and then you go like, oh, let me, let me you know, work some more. Let me earn some more money. Because you think that rest comes from the more money you earn. Because you think that true rest comes from your boss being happy towards you. But God is saying that, no, your rest comes from me because in verse 15, God says, remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand, by an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath. And God is saying that you can keep the Sabbath because don't forget who was the one who set you free. Now that you're free, use that freedom to rest. Oh, but, but God, you no, know, the obstacles in my life, have you forgotten who was the one who set you free? What obstacles was greater than slavery in Egypt? What obstacles was greater than the Red Sea? Did I not part it? Did I not humble the Pharaoh? And then they were like, okay, God, we get it. So we rest. Because you see, if you don't feel safe, if you feel like, you know, you got something to do, if you feel incomplete, it's hard for you to rest. That's so why if you don't finish your homework, it's hard for you to rest. You know, I know this from personal experience growing up, you know, school holiday is no fun until you finish your homework. You know, you, you, otherwise you, you suffer. You know, you can play your Super Nintendo, but then there's always this phantom of homework hovering behind you. You know, until I, until I grew to a certain age where I figured out actually holiday homeworks are... Uh, anyway, that's another message for another day. And I love how God uses imagery. I rescued you. I brought you out from Egypt. I brought you out from slavery. I brought you out from bondage with my mighty hand by an outstretched arm. And when I read it, I cannot help but envision the cross. And could it mean, could it be that in God telling his people, he was also telegraphing the way he was going to give all of his children perfect rest? and perfect freedom by His mighty hand that was pierced for us by His outstretched arm on that cross. And that's a powerful reminder, not just for Old Test the Old Testament Israel, Israel, Israel children, nation of Israel, at the years of slavery and how powerful God defeated Pharaoh and rescued them as the reminder, as the assurance that you can take a break. And for us, New Testament, we have the assurance that Jesus has done it all for us so we can take a break. Jesus has forgiven us of our sins so we can take a break. Jesus has, has, has you know, died for our sins, risen from the cross by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm so we can take a break. And when you remember where your rest comes from, then you get true rest. Otherwise, you can go for a lot of holidays and you still won't be rested. We heard this saying before, I need a holiday to recover from this holiday. And God is saying the Sabbath is not just a holiday, it's a holy day. And once you get that right, true rest comes out. You know, eating a lot of food can be enjoyable for that moment, but you suffer because what comes in must come out. Or if it doesn't come out, then you suffer because you'd be like, oh, why am I so fat and all that, you know? <laughs> If you drink a lot of wine and it might make you happy for a while, but what comes in must also come out. And usually what comes out is a lot of destruction and bad decisions. But it's only in God. It's only in God that you can find true rest. And Jesus reminds us of this in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 29. Matthew 11, 28 to 29. You know, as you can see here, I'm trying to Use Old Testament, but also what did Jesus teach on the Sabbath? What did Jesus do on the Sabbath? He said, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath and man was and Sabbath was created for men. Not the other way around. And then he says this about rest and peace. He says this, Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. This is a powerful imagery. If we, if we just look at this, yes, you can see it as an invitation for God. Come to me, all of you who are weary, and I will give you rest. But it is so much more than that because many times we forget. He says that, and I, and take my yoke upon you. 
Now, a yoke, go back and Google this, Y-O-K-E, yoke is this thing that in agriculture, farmers put between two animals. It is a way to connect two animals together. So for example, all right, uh, just for illustration purposes, uh, a yoke is usually something that is on your back. It is not the most comfortable. So can you imagine if two horses, two cows have this on their back? You've seen that before. Any chariots, you have them on the back. Okay, I'm doing this for the people in the camera. Those of you listening online for the podcast later this week, just imagine. And so Google and imagine, okay? So a yoke. And God is not just saying that, come to me and I'll give you rest. Come to me, I will give you rest. And my, and my rest, true rest, is found when you take my yoke, Jesus' yoke, upon you. Now, in ancient times, a yoke is also used for farmers to train animals. And so they usually have like one uh, bull that's very strong, you know, that's very obedient. And what they do is when they get a new bull is to put these two bulls together so that the new bull can learn from the old bull how to respond well to the farmer and how to work the till because you know, otherwise the new bull is like, oh, no, I don't want until a yoke is put on it. But not by itself. It's put on a more experienced bull, more experienced animal. And so, for example, a cat, why don't you come? You know, because we're from the same household, so we can do this exercise. So Jesus is trying to say, all right, come to me all who labor, right? And it doesn't sound very kind. Come to me all who labor and put on my yoke. You know, come to me and then put on my yoke. But then it says, but is Jesus a, a, a fierce uh, a, a bull that will, no, but that when you yoke with him, he will run you to the ground. No, it says this, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. That's what yokes do. You yoke together so that the younger bull learns from. And then it says there, for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. And so in other words, God is saying many times we think that, okay, pastor, I get it. I'm human. I need a break. So let me start Googling holidays. Iceland, here I come. But God is saying a true rest. Iceland can, can be good for you, but then you need, you know, a, a, a hot land to, 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 to warm you up. Uh, if you don't get that joke, never mind. But, you know, and so, but God is saying that, look, come, yoke upon me and this is true rest for you. Thanks, Kat. In other words, true rest is not apart from God. It is next to God. It is with God. It is not without God, but it is with God. And God is saying that, you know, come upon me and be yoked together with me. Celebrate Sabbath, but in your celebration of Sabbath, in your stop and rest, do not exclude God. Because it's so easy for us to go like, oh, I need a break. So I need a break from serving. I need a break from church. No, and God is saying, yeah, you do need a break. You do need time to stop and to receive. Stop and abide, but don't stray away from me because it is with me. And that's why we encourage people to come to church on Sunday because it is with God that we find true rest. Come and serve. You know, you, 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 none of us are full-time musicians, so that doesn't constitute as work. So stop being a student and on Sunday, be a rock star for Jesus. And when you take upon the yoke of serving that can look like a yoke or commitment or practice or coming early, you will find true rest. When, when your ministry team leader, when, when Gareth tells you, hey, suit up for Sunday because, you know, we want to be our best ushers to give you a good impression and you're thinking, oh, no, I don't want to. No, when you do that, it is a yoke, but it is a yoke from Jesus that will give you true rest. And so again, you know, God is saying, hey, you know, you need to remember where your rest comes from. It comes from not away from me, but with me. Not without me, but with me. Amen? So, so let, let's, let's not compromise on that. Amen? Let's, let's learn to stop, but also let's learn to sit. You know, and I, just like the song that we sang today. You know, I just want to, I just want to, you know, be in this moment with you. You know, I just want to have this holy moment with you, with God. And that's why our friends in, in, at home, if you're watching, you no know, service and worship is not complete. If you just sat back and watched, that's not Shabbat. That's not worship. That's not commandment number four. It is only when you engage with God. 
huh? I'm at home and then the chairperson is asking me to dance and to, to sing out loud. Oh, I don't want that yoke. And yet God is saying that it is with my yoke that your life becomes light and easy and your soul finds true rest. It is in your dancing for the Lord that your feet are nourished back to health. Amen? Okay, let's, let's go on point number three. So we know what this command tells us, right, about ourselves, that we are only human and humans need to rest, right? And we know, we need to remember, right, what was this command given? We need to remember where our rest comes from. And once you know where your rest comes from, we're able to release, release control to God. Once you know that it is God who made you, not your boss, then you, are, you can take break from your work. You know? A lot of us, we think that, no, if I, if, I do, if I don't work extra, my boss will be angry at me. And then God is saying that, who does, where does your rest come from? Your bank account or me? Your boss's approval or me? Uh, you. Okay, now release. And then when you release that problem, you, you actually be immediately de-stressed. You're able to let that email go, let that wrong decision go, let that problem go. And God is saying this, let it go for a day because in this connection, point number three, so how do we live it out today is the question we ask ourselves every week. How do we live out this scripture today? Point number three, we need to prepare and commit to the Sabbath. Two components. We need to prepare and in the preparation, we learn the rhythm of God. Okay, bonus three R's there. Rest, release, and the rhythm of God. Why the rhythm of God? God is saying that work six days and then rest on, on the seventh. Work six days, rest on the seventh. Work six days, rest on the seventh. God is saying that there is a rhythm. Another reason why we don't rest well is because we don't prepare for it. Instead of working when we need to work, we rest when we need to work. That's why when we need to rest, we need to work. And God is saying, that work when you need to work, rest when you need to work, rest when you need to rest. Work when you need to work, rest when you need to rest. Work when you need to rest. And, and that's the rhythm of God. Work. Six days, work. Work. And God shows this, you know, in Luke chapter 14, verse 16 to 22, you have this, you know, it says, oh no, uh, uh, apologies, we'll come back to this later. But Luke chapter 23, verse 50 to 56. Luke 23, verse 50 to 56. Right? And I want us to focus on, now behold, there was a man named Joseph, a council member, a good and just man. He had not consented to the decision and deed. He was from Arimathea, a city of the Jews. He himself was also waiting for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen, and laid it in a tomb that was hewn out of the rock where no one had ever lain. The day was the preparation. That day was the preparation and the Sabbath drew near. And the women who had come with him from Galilee followed after and they observed the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils and they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandments. Pay attention to verse 54. The that day was preparation. Uh, in Israel, the, the day before Sabbath is called preparation day. Because to, 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 to rest on the seventh, you've got to prepare for that rest. And so they had six days to work, but that last day was for them to basically tie off all loose ends, finish all homework, get everything done before sundown so that you can rest. They will prepare. So that day you know, became the day of preparation. You no know, Friday, in other words, day of preparation. Even for us today, you know, Friday is day of preparation. So it's preparation to fly for a holiday, but you no know, preparation. And God is saying that, you know, you've got to prepare. You know, even, you know, and, and, and what's beautiful is this, right? Even God, point number three, right? He said we need to prepare and commit to the Sabbath. Even Jesus committed to the Sabbath to the point of his death. Well, he died on the eve of the Sabbath. And even when he was buried, there was Sabbath. There was a commitment, there was a preparation and a commitment, and his people did the same. Joseph prepared on the preparation day to bury Jesus, and they prepared spices and fragrance for a few days later, and then they went back and they observed the Sabbath. And Jesus was showing us that even in the New Testament, that is to enjoy God's rhythm, you got to prepare and commit. And Jesus was 
was honoring this. He was committed to, to the Sabbath. Even, you know, we talk about Sabbath being a place of, of stop and rest, but also a place of recharge with God. Also a place of just sitting and dwelling with God. And that's why before Jesus started his ministry, his ministry was started on the Sabbath. In Luke 4, 16, 22, which I talked about earlier on. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus, in, this, is, uh, this is him kicking off his ministry. In kicking off his ministry, he honoured the Sabbath. At the end of his ministry, he honoured the Sabbath. Who are we to break the Sabbath? Who are we to break the rhythm of God? And God is trying to tell us that not only are we human, there is a rhythm. There is, there is, those of you who have trained for swimming, you'll understand. The swimming is not, if you want to be competitive in swimming, it's not just about, you know, knowing the strokes, it's about the rhythm. It's not just about, and this is how I swim, I've got big lungs so I can swim, I've got long feet so I can swim, I know I'm half frog, so, no, no, no. There's a rhythm that you got to master. In golf, they, they call this not just how strong your arms are, what, your, what metal you're using, what ball, you know, how many holes. No, it's also about the stroke. There's a rhythm. In badminton, there is the smash. There is the rhythm. You know, in, in, in power walking, there is the rhythm. There is a rhythm. God is saying that there is a rhythm to life. In fact, certain translations, the New Living Translation or even the Message Translation says this about the previous scripture we read. Come to me, you know, take up my yoke and I will give your souls rest. Certain translations say, learn from me the unforced rhythms of grace. You see, we, we, we see this all the time. We like it all the time on Instagram. Very nice. Oh, unforced rhythm of grace. But it's tied to the Sabbath. The unforced rhythm of God means this. Six days you work and when you need to rest, rest. And by doing this, you cover more ground. By doing this, you're more effective than you realize. But this is, this is something that you got to prepare and commit to. Because when you don't work when you need to work, then you will find it very hard to rest and it will almost be borderline irresponsible for you to rest. And that's why, you know, in Wingman, this means that part of our worship to God is also a strong and healthy work ethic. Wow. That means God is saying that my people are diligent people and you worship God in your diligence. But not just in your diligence, but also in your rest. That's mind-blowing. God, you're worshiping in, your, my, my, in, in my diligence? Yes. But only for six days. Then on the seventh day, you need to rest. You know, spend time with family. Spend time in church. Spend more time than usual reading the Word of God. Spend time just worshipping. Spend time serving others because that's what the Sabbath is meant to do. In uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 9, Jesus commands us to do good on the Sabbath because He asked them, Jesus said, I ask you one thing, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save a life or to destroy? And they follow up by healing someone. In other words, Sabbath is not just, like I said, it's not just a holiday. It's a holiday for us to draw near to God draw near to friends, but to also do good. To release the things we got to release, the unforgiveness, the stress, release it to God and to commit to that rhythm. Six, take a break. Six days, take a break. And, and not just that, this wasn't just a weekly rhythm. God had a, a divine rhythm and, and, and in, in, in Jewish culture and custom is work six days, rest on the seventh. Work six years, rest on the seventh year. That was called the Sabbath year. How many of you would love for a globe, not globally, but nationally mandated entire year of bank holiday? 365 days. Come on, can I hear a hallelujah and amen? Right? Can you imagine? Right? That means work, right? Every work for six years. But in the six years, you have your rhythm of six days, one break, six days, one break. And then six years, one big break year. And it was not just break, but also like the land. Nobody could work the land, so the land got to heal. So God is for the environment. 
God is for people, for workers' rights and for the environment. An entire year, his four rest, entire people were to chill. And then, when the seven times seven, 49, very clever, that is called the year of Jubilee, in which is what Jesus alluded to. This is the year of the Lord's favor, also the year of Jubilee. So, for, so, so six days, one day rest, six years, one year rest, 49 years, the 50th year, super rest. It was called the year of the Lord's Jubilee. And this is where all debts are forgiven. You owe people money, reset, don't owe the bank anything. The house is yours. The cow is yours. Prisoners are set free. This is the year of the Lord's Jubilee because He set us free, so we set you free. Free! Don't sin again. If you sin, we'll see you again next year. And that was God's rhythm. Six, one break. Seven years, one break. 49 years, mega, mega break. And God is introducing us to His rhythm because also one day we will see God and we will have the, not just the year of Jubilee, we will have eternity of Jubilee. Six years, one break. Is it easy? What does this speak to us today? That means that maybe we got to take charge of our Mondays to, well, we're so thankful we got Monday to Friday only. So use your Mondays to Fridays. Work well. Be responsible. Be hardworking. And then break. Just like how people on a diet, they have cheat days. Right? No, I, I'm, I'm trying to cut down on sugar, but weekends are my cheat days. I'm not sure if it works that way, but I, I self-declare it. And so weekends, I look forward to the weekends. You have no idea I look forward to the weekends because the weekends I can taste sugar. And God is saying that, you see, when you do that, when you follow my rhythm, your love for Him increases because you associate God with rest. You associate God with good things. Oh, I work so hard, my boss don't understand me, but one day, one day, my boss cannot touch me. And that day was given by God. That means God protects me from my boss for that one day. Can I share with you as we close a, a, a testimony? Uh, this is not my testimony, but there's this organization in America. Like I said, this, this, there needs to be preparation and there needs to be a commitment to God's rhythm and God's Sabbath. That's how we practice it. And when you practice it, you will be blessed. Now, is it easy to practice? Is it easy to commit to? No. There's this organization in America. It's a fast food restaurant called Chick-fil-A. All right? That closes on a Sunday. All right? According to Forbes.com, Chick-fil-A, in 2019, was named America's number one restaurant in the fast food industry in the Annual American Customer Satisfaction Index, the ACSI. This index is evaluated by half a million consumers on the order accuracy of the restaurant, food quality, speed of service, and because now we live in the modern age, the mobile app reliability. They have been ranked number one six years in a row as of 2019. Right? They scored out of half a million people, they scored 84 over 100. Second highest scored fast food restaurant in 2019 was Chipotle. And they scored 80 over 100. See, this company, Chick-fil-A, they, they close on a Sunday. They take breaks. The founders are Christians and it's a privately owned family business. There's no shareholders. And then they go like, we will treat our members well. We will treat our employees well. We will work hard for six days, but on Sunday, we will all take a break. If the CEO takes a break, you take a break from the dishwasher to the CEO. And other people are like crazy. You're on Sunday, when people bring their kids out, you want to close? And yet they score number one in customer satisfaction, food quality, and all these things. Now let's talk about something more interesting, money. In Business Insider and Forbes released this, in 2019, Chick-fil-A ranked number three in America, in terms of their sales, they brought in $11.3 billion in 2019. They are only topped by two other organizations in 2019. Guess who's number one? McDonald's. Of course, right? America McDonald's. They, McDonald's brought in $40 billion in 2019. And this was an increase of 5% compared to 2018. And second was, anyone? Second? Starbucks. 
Starbucks brought in $21 billion in sales and this was a growth of 9%. Number three was Chick-fil-A, $11.3 billion and their growth was 13%. Now, you might be thinking, Pastor, I thought this was testimony. How come this person honored God and he comes in third? McDonald's in America has 13,846 locations and they brought in 40 billion. Starbucks has 15,049 locations and they brought in 21 billion. Chick-fil-A has 2,470 locations and they brought in 11.3 billion. Now you go like, hmm, something supernatural. And be mindful, and they took a day off. With less resources, better treatment of people, less working days, they made more money than even KFC, which was at number 14. I, I knew somebody who loves KFC. Guess what? KFC only brought in $4 billion. I, when, when I say this, I apologize to all the people out there. What I mean is in comparison to Chick-fil-A, brought in only $4 billion in sales, a 3% growth. And uh, apparently in KFC in, in America, its popularity is shrinking. They've only got 4,065 location, locations. But that's still 2,000 more than Chick-fil-A. And that's still 52 days more business. We can. And people have, have, have done the research and said, Chick-fil-A, if you open one more day a week, if you work 52 more days a year, you will bring in another billion. How many of you would love to work 52 days and earn a billion dollars? Just 52 days a year and, 50, and 1 billion. How many of you? Come on. No? 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 Really? Liars. Come back for commandment number. Anyway, so... Is it a commitment to say goodbye to a billion dollars? 52 more days and one more billion. And yet it's a commitment to go, no, God comes first. And because God comes first, people must also come first. And then now, people are, 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 are now studying their model and going like, oh, actually, you know, this is very clever because it creates this thing called scarcity. And so when people want to have it, they can't. And so that when they can't have it, they will order more. Oh, Chick-fil-A, you're so clever. You're so cunning in your business strategy. And then they go like, no, we're just honoring God's commandment number four. You see, when you honor God, when you make preparations, I guarantee you, friends, if you go back and you practice this, students, if you begin to put in more work on your Monday to Friday, don't skip homes. Don't skip prayer meeting. Don't say that, oh, I'm, I'm preparing for the Sabbath. I will. <laughs> if you put in work from your Monday to Friday, you will see, and you will see that you can still have your Sabbath. God can still be glorified and your grades will still go up. Young adults, those of you who work, I know some of you love working, but learn to say no to your boss and start saying yes to God. Work, commit to work five days. Even if you do six days, God says it's okay. But then have that day to Sabbath, to rest, and you will see rhythm-wise, you'll become healthier, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and better equipped for Monday. It, I, I used to struggle with rest. With this last simple testimony, I'll close. I used to struggle with rest because, you know, uh, like I said, being, being a pastor, being a preacher, it's a responsibility, but it's also something I enjoy doing. And so sometimes when Monday comes, I, I, and, and, you know, by, you know, technically speaking, labor law and everything else, yeah, it is my day of rest. Um, but I struggle with it. Can I be honest with you? Because I go like, oh, I want to do something Monday. Everyone goes to work. I also feel I need to go to work. I also need to meet people, etc. And more than anything, I, I feel guilty. I feel guilty for, for, for resting from something that I, 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 that I do work, uh, you know, and, and a pastor's role is a bit more messier. It's not just a simple nine to five. It's, you know, all the time, you know, just in fact, yesterday, uh, uh, just impromptu, Im impromptu counseling over the phone just, just happened Saturday afternoon, just like that. And that, that's okay. That's, that's what we do. Uh, and then God began to say that, no, Dave, you got to learn to, you know, if you don't want, at least take Monday mornings off. If you want to meet people because people have to be met on that day, just learn to take Monday mornings off. You know, sleep in a little, have a little bit of coffee, 
and just, just do that, ignore the dog, just, 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 just rest. Because God began to tell me and say that, Dave, a lot of things you do leading the church and, and, and managing people, uh, you know, if you're not rested, you can't make good decisions. If you're not rested emotionally and physically, when people come to you and say, Pastor, is God telling me this, this, you're not in a position to be able to confidently tell them yes or no. And so you need to rest in me so that you can be effective in your preaching, you can be effective in your leading, you can be effective in your prayer. Rest. And that's when I begin to go like, okay, God, I will learn to rest. I will learn to be... Because sometimes growing up, some of us come from a culture where we celebrate work. And it's a good thing to have strong work ethic and to have days of rest is almost considered like you are a weakling. And God is saying that it's no sign of weakness that you need to rest. It means that you're only human. But when you rest, remember where your rest comes from and prepare and commit to it. Don't just use Sabbath as an excuse to be lazy. Prepare, have a good, strong work ethic, embrace my rhythm, prepare and commit to it. And you will see blessing increase in your life. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for the word today. I pray that we will be able to go back and unpack it, help us to look at our lives and ask ourselves, have we been productive? And God, how can we be productive for the times we need to be productive so that we can rest when we need to rest? Lord, help us, Lord, to focus in on this so that we do not give in to daydreaming, we do not give in to laziness, but Lord, help us to work when we need to work so that we embrace your rhythm so that we can rest when we need to rest. And in that rest, there's blessing. In that rest, there is healing to our souls as well. And God, we pray that through this, we will also understand that the Sabbath is not just about a holiday. It is a holy day. It is a day with you. And it is only when we are yoked with you that our soul finds true rest. Thank you, God, for loving us even though we are so human. Thank you, Lord, for your grace that helps us to live out this law. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before I close today's service, just very quickly for both people here, maybe, or even our friends online, true rest comes from Jesus. And it's only in Jesus that we find true rest. And so friends, if you don't have Jesus in your life, you can be searching, but there's always dissatisfaction. You, you think a new relationship can make you happy, but a boyfriend can never be perfect. A girlfriend can never be perfect. That high-paying job will never satisfy. That holiday will only make you want to take another holiday. Only when you have Jesus in your life will your soul find true rest. And so friends, if you're seated here or even tuning in online, all this while you think that, no, I just need more money. No, I just need to take a break. No, I, I just need to be in control. God is saying, learn to let go. Let go of control. Trust in Him. Rest in Him. That's where true rest comes from. And so maybe you're here, maybe you're tuning in online and you never accepted Jesus into your heart. But today, you feel so inspired and touched by God's word that you feel a nudging in your heart that you need to obey, that you need to surrender. Then can I encourage you to, by faith, to repeat this prayer after me. The Bible says that anyone who calls out to Jesus will be saved. And what we're doing is just calling out to Jesus, acknowledging our need for Him. The power is not in the words of this prayer, but it's in the sincerity of our heart in our invitation. And so as a church, why don't we do this together? I know it's a powerful reminder of what Jesus has done for us, but if friends, if you've never done this before, if you repeat this, you say this, and you mean it with all your heart, the Bible says that you will be born again, you will be saved, your sins are forgiven, and true rest has finally come home. And so let's pray this together. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for paying the ultimate price for my sins by dying on the cross for me. I receive your love and forgiveness and eternal life by faith. Come into my heart and life. And be my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. If you said that, we, in Matthew, all your heart, we believe that you've been born again. You are a new creation in God. Uh, if you did that online, please direct messages and we will be in touch. If you did it in person, please come and talk to us. We've got some materials to pass on to you to help you grow into the next level of your faith. Amen. God bless you. And I'm going to invite Bess to come and close us in prayer and declare the benediction over us. Amen.
Thank you so much, Pastor Dave, for such a powerful and message and a reminder for us to, to rest. And um, let's learn, let's uh, take this back with us and learn to unpack, um, to unpack it throughout the weeks. And let's learn to prepare and commit um, our Sabbath and keep our Sabbaths holy for the Lord. Amen. And even as we end service today, would you allow me to close us in prayer? Father, we pray for your covering and care to come upon our entire church family, pastors Kenneth and Sandra, elders, pastors, and all our church plan coordinators, both here and abroad, as well as all our church leaders serving your household faithfully week after week. Give us your daily peace and protection and provide all of our needs according to your riches in glory, especially the wisdom to be a church that is in line with your perfect will. Let your joy always be our strength, and may our lives always bring you glory. In Jesus' most precious name, we ask and pray. Amen. And before we end, church, may I invite all of you to stand and lift your hands um, as I declare the benediction, which is a prayer of God's blessing over all of us. So reading from Numbers chapter 6 verses 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Have a good week, church. Um, church is officially over, but do stay back and we would love to, to talk to you adjourn outside in the courtyard and in groups of six and we would love to 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 get to know you thanks for coming and thank you for tuning in Oh